What's up, family? So I just got this package in the mail. No intro, no nothing. I'm going straight into this one. I got some fish that are very sentimental. And it just goes to show the testament of the island. I know y'all waiting to see. Yes, I'm doing the unboxing. I already opened the box. So I guess I'm doing a, a sharing. Y'all sit tight. So, without further ado, what do I have in here? I have something really cool in this box. I already opened it, like I said. I don't want the address to show, but I have two trios of a very special fish. And why do I have my sunglasses? In lieu of everybody making fun of me, like I had got choked up, man. My eyes was red and shit, cause I was over there like tearing up and shit because First time I saw these, I was in the Persian Gulf. What I have in here is a Phineas Mento. A Phineas Mento. The one I saw in the wild was the Arabian pupfish. A Phineas fasciatus. Go Google it, y'all. Anyway, a YouTuber that I linked up with and got to talking to said he had some and I was like oh you got those and I said how long story short spoils of war that's all I'll say and I'm sitting up here and I'm looking ahead of y'all like I'm looking at them. I have two trios two trios everybody's happy everybody's alive you can't see them very well in the bag I know I know. I just want to capture this. And the rest of the video will be staged for your view and enjoyment, but I wanted to capture this moment for myself, for the kids, for the fans, because y'all know my YouTube channel. It's my time caps. There they are, bro. Like in the flesh. I got them. I'm about to like love on these things. Uh, do, uh, get all that stuff. Y'all sit tight. We'll nerd out on these guys in a second. All right, so I got them floating. I'm gonna let them acclimate. I just got them in here with the Neo. Uh, one of my Neo tanks. They ain't, yeah, I don't want nothing. They're, these fish are tougher than wood peck of lips. Don't get it twisted. But it's just me being, being extra. Uh, I don't anticipate nothing happening. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go ahead and get the light on here. Because uh, they need to get used to it. And you let y'all get a glimpse at these beauties right here. So this is a Phineas Mento. Spotted Killy. It's an uh, iridescent Killy. I don't remember. I don't do store names, y'all. So. One of y'all leave it in the comments what the store name of this thing is. There's just too many fish on the planet to be remembering all these bullshit names. I know that this is Aphionis Mento, or it could be Fasciatus, or something like that, but we know it's a killie fish. Girohaline, it's a pup fish, and it is pugnacious. These little batches look amazing. I'm so happy. So we're gonna let these guys acclimate. So once I get them acclimated, I'll put them in this little uh, plastic carrier box that I have over here. And we'll be able to take a look at them. But since we in here, I'll show y'all a few tanks that I got up so far. Um, and we'll go from there. We'll nerd out about these beautiful, beautiful fish for a little while and then we'll go from there. I'll look, let me show y'all some fish. So in this tank, there ain't nothing in here. There's one Akara. And then, uh, oh, y'all wanna see the Akara from the sanctuary tank? Yes? No? Here they go right there. I got them all in their own new enclosure. And I wanna show y'all a dope experiment. I'm kinda like putting all my ideas out uh, before I like decide if I wanna do them. And now I kinda gotta do it. Shit. But check this out. So these are all clutch mates, man. So 
when I say clutch mates, they weren't all in the same clutch. They're all from the same mom and pop, and they're all within one or two spawns of each other. And just look at the variation in the size on these guys. Real simple setup, man. Bare bones, and they're happy. Look at the belly bottom, the fat, they're eating well. They're taking care of it. So this is that for these guys. Um, old school setup, man. Don't ever throw away your stuff. So when that moving company literally effed me over, um, thank God I had this stuff. Like I've accumulated this stuff over the course of the hobby, man. In a pinch, it's gonna, it's working until I accept the fact that I ain't getting my stuff back and uh, there ain't gonna be no settlement from this company. So I'm just gonna have to go ahead and spend the money and reinvest and buy all new gear that I lost. So there's these guys. And then check this out. Same thing. Check these out. This tank don't, it don't even have lights on it. These are, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet. Maybe breed them, don't know. This water is hella cloudy. Um, actually they overfed the other day. It's all good. I'm not water changing it. I need this bloom to happen. Uh, I'll throw some plants in here. And it'll clear up. The fish are fine. I watch the fish. If they show any signs of, hey bro, what the hell? I'll get them out. Don't mind the cord. All right, now we'll move over here to this guy. Check this guy out. Turks, baby. That's what a red poster look like. So there's some Turk fry growing out out here. And they all got fat bellies. Hell, I might be able to spawn these here within the next couple weeks or so. I'm gonna have to give them some more structure. Y'all can see I don't have anything blacked out out here because these are just husbandry tanks. Like the animals are what's important. If it's out here, it's because of my animals. They're important. I could care less about aquascaping or anything. I need a working filter. I need some water movement. I need some air and I need to be able to keep these little bastards fat and healthy like that. Look at that. I mean, they're not scared of nothing. They're waiting on me to feed them. So that's that. And I got one more for you guys. And so this is an experiment. And there's convicts in here. I know you guys can't see it very well, but she spit fry. She has free swimming fry with her back there. Yeah, this is just a fording breeder. I threw a philodendron leaf in here for the biofilm. So the fry have something to eat off of. That's what I'm observing. That's like the first meal. It's the most important thing with fry is biofilm is what I'm seeing. When you're letting them be naturally reared. So there's her. I give them a flower pot. They go pit it up over here and build back there. That light you see is just a power, power strip. Like I said, it's real simple, gypsy style setup. Man, there ain't no excuse. God forbid, if I gotta get out of here, with the unstable times we are facing in the country, I can uh, get all this shit moved out of here in a couple days, a weekend. I can get it done. One Friday night and a couple uh, monster drinks and I can grind all night. It is what it is. But there's that. So there's the babies. I was thinking about it. And it's just not right for y'all to not see them, so. There they go. Um, true story. I bought her as a girlfriend for this male. These are those uh, convicts I got from Big Tank Hank a couple of videos ago when I bought the alien beta. I'll show you him in a minute. But I bought her as a girlfriend to him because she had a full belly. And she was in here a day. They pitted and spawned. I have free shrimp and I haven't known this fish a week. No cap. But I'm already, yeah. So I'm, I got something, I'm, I'm doing something with convicts, man. So that's that on this guys. Let's check out this Haiti. All right, so don't mind the grow table. I need, I need more plants. An empty grow table is a good problem to have. Trust me. So here, if y'all look in here, this alien has his whole, this, he basically has his whole thing to himself. The only reason he's in the basket is because I don't like looking for it. 
There's also a uh, stupid ass Garami in here that likes to hide under one of my uh, partitions and I'm not messing up my partitions to find a Garami and y'all have already seen too much behind the scenes. So, but yeah, here's that beta. Let me get this in. Cool Anubias. Hey, these are for sale by the way. Uh, not those specific ones. I have more than them. Not gonna fail. But there's the alien. Looking good, feeling fine. I gotta feed him some mosquitoes. But there's him. Let's see if, uh, let's give these uh, Achilles an acclamation. And let's see if it's time to go ahead and get them in. I'm ready to look at them. I know y'all are too. So before I decide to let my Achilles fish, so fucking stoked go in this tank I would be remiss I mentioned the neos and didn't show you guys any neos what's up with that so here's the skittles mix that I have and these these skittles mixes are available uh, this one is uh, blue heavy and red heavy there's yellow in here I have some pumpkin these are all Sakura grade so as you can see they're Sakura grade man Good, they're transparent, but good, good popping color. So they're really, really nice, nice, nice grade Sakuras. Every once in a while, you might get a B grade in there or so, like that guy, he's fish food. I shouldn't have said that on camera, but um, like that. And then, you know, good guys like that. That's a beauty, that's a real nice Sakura grade. And that's about as, Transparent as I would like the shrimp to be before we start getting into the painting and the fires and the triple S's and double S's. But yeah, this is, this is quality. So these are available. And I just got them in here with some guppy grass. And I saw that. I thought it was cool. Filter ruined it. Blew some guppy grass in it. But these guys are in here and they're good. And look at this little. These guys are already livening up in the bag. They're looking good, man looking good. All right, without further ado, let's get them in here. Let's look at them. Y'all sit tight. I'm going to come back to y'all after I got them in. All right, so I'm back. Let's take a look at these guys close. I'm getting close. <clears throat> so nothing spectacular right away. As you can see. Here they go, man. How lovely. Like I said, nothing too spectacular at the moment. They got to color up. And I will let them do that. We'll check on them in a little bit. From a different angle. Since I got y'all over here visiting me today at my house, I want to show y'all my pond. If y'all follow me on Instagram or Facebook or whatever y'all know, I post the majority of my stuff on social media. I only make YouTube videos when I feel like I have something noteworthy to film. I'm not going to annoy the piss out of you to show you a guppy on the video. Go to Instagram. 
But here's my pond. I have Philanthus fluid tans in here. I also have Limnia, so duckweed. It's the native duckweed. It's the uh, not the giant. I wish I could get some. And there's some snot grass growing in here along with some anacris. Here, let me flip this camera. I'm going to show y'all what I'm talking about. And I think I will go ahead and harvest some food. I'm like sweating. Blue Jay. Sweet. Let me see if I could. Y'all want to see the Blue Jay? Hold up. So he should be. He just ducked back behind that tree. So let me show y'all. I got this little gazebo that we built in the backyard. It's windy, so bear with it. So look. Magnolia leaves, I'm curing them out here. I keep my nets and stuff, and I just dry them like tobacco. I think that's really cool. Don't mind the wind. I'm gonna get back under the gazebo, but it's just corrugated uh, steel. We call it tin in the country, but it's corrugated steel and uh, galvanized with, uh, this is another grow shed. I'm not showing y'all what's in there yet. It'll come, but that's some a project I got going on in there. And I got my wood crib right here. And some more projects over there, shelves and stuff. Easy day. I need to come out here and organize. It is what it is. So the pond. So here's the pond, right? And I started this pond when I first got here. Blah, blah, blah. It was cold. I put goldfish in it. What happened is my dogs thought it would be a good idea to use this as their water fountain. They started drinking out of it. Infusoria followed and I nuked it trying to do a flush and fill and um I forgot I don't have a carbon bottle and I'm not a field tech for a aquarium place no more and I'm just running straight tap water so I nuked it um there were some casualties of war but everything didn't die so slowly right as y'all are looking at this pond so slowly I start noticing that my fish are disappearing long story short the freaking dog was catching the fucking goldfish and taking them and dropping them in the yard and hey guess what the blue jay came back y'all right there told you it's turf so i see him all the time and i don't put bird food out here because i have an xxl bully who thinks that everything belongs to her and i don't want to get michael vicked so <laughs> we don't put bird food out so in here, this thing is loaded, if you can see, with mosquito larvae. And I had this log over here, and it was a cross, but I think the landscaper accidentally knocked it when he was uh, blowing off the patio because he mowed today. And um, yeah, I don't mow my yard. And um, he knocked it off. What I did was I let it, and there was a watchman spider. He's going to drown. I gotta help. I'm not interfering with nature. I want to, but I'm not. But he was catching all the mosquitoes if they were, if they made it to adult stage. So, you know, because I don't want to be introduced to mosquitoes. Mosquitoes suck, but they make good free fish food. So, I think, yeah, let me set this up. And I'm going to grab some larvae and I'm going to show y'all. But look in there, right there, right here in between that is larvae. I'm gonna zoom in for y'all. Boom. There you go. So there's some philanthropic fluid pan. And believe it or not, um, people think the sun is the end all be all to grow in plants, but that is not true at all. People would think that Oh, it's a red plant that needs to grow in full sun. That's bullshit too. Anthocyan is sunblock for plants. So if it's red, it means it don't like a shitload of sun. Can it tolerate it? Absolutely. But does it prefer it? No. There's your uh, larvae there though. Yo, I, have to, I digress from that tangent, but there you go. There's your larvae. So I'm gonna set this up and I'm gonna harvest some and then I'm gonna feed. And if y'all wanna see that, sit tight. I feel generous today. I owe you guys a good video. Thank y'all for rocking with me. Okay, so I'm back. I got the stuff. I'm gonna grab this net. I used this one. Believe it or not, even though this is the same mesh, just about, as this big one here, 
they actually, the larvae actually go through this one because I'm thinking a bigger net, I can make one swoop, get more. No, nah, bullshit. You, I got to sit out here and use this one. And I'm too cheap to go on Amazon and just buy some bird netting, some mist net, and do the shit the right way. But it's just what it is. I have a brown shrimp net, though, and I do use that. So I'm going to flip the camera, set this up on the tripod. I'll probably do a time lapse or something. And I'm going to harvest these, and I'll see y'all in a minute when we uh, get in the house. Sit tight. So real quick, you need a container with some clean water in it. This already has some larvae in it from a uh, previous day's feeding. That's the good thing about this stuff is it don't go bad, folks. It don't go bad. apologize about the focus. But, so you need this container, and this helps. This helps, but it's not required. And you need some clean water. Like this. This is clean. This is clean rain water. Right here. I catch rain. Yes, I do. This is clean rain water. A little bit of duckweed in it from uh, residual. And that's what you got. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Okay, so now I harvest this um, larvae, and there's all kinds of larvae in here. Word of caution. Anytime you introduce anything from outside into your aquarium, you run the risk of introducing pathogens and other biological things that go in your tank. Could be detrimental, could not be. Could be negative, could be positive, could, could be inert. Okay, with that being said, I want to show you guys a predator that you need to worry about. Because if you live in a temperate region in the world, and hell, even some arctic regions, um, dragonflies, damselflies, etc., they are aquatic insects. They are as voracious. They're voracious insect eaters. Insectivores, I guess you would call them. Uh, adult dragonflies is what we see flying. They eat mosquitoes, gnats, etc. Hence the name dragonfly because of their tenacity. Okay. And the larval stage, they're just as voracious predators and they will eat other insects, larvae, small fish, tadpoles, basically anything that they can catch. You want to be mindful of that if you were doing something like a cool project, you had some cool fish in there, and you had fry in that tank. Okay, I'm feeding these to, for example, to condition something to get ready to breed. So if they are successful, they breed, I tank rear them, which is what I usually do. I don't want to introduce anything in there that's gonna eat my fish, especially for something rare and or expensive, which is probably some of the only stuff I'll breed unless I'm doing a project. So that quick little tangent, here's these guys. Let me show you what a dragonfly larvae looks like because I actually have some. Give me a moment, grab it. Okay, so I want you to look right here. See that thing wiggling down there at the bottom right corner? It looks like a caterpillar. That, my friends, is a dragonfly larvae. And I am, um, I don't do insects like that, like that. I'm not an entomologist, so I can't tell you what species it is. If I had to guess, I would say it was probably a little damselfly. Those, uh, they got the orange wings and they're brownish color. I don't think it's one of our greens or our blues, uh, but that's what they look like. There's also some pond snails in here and some reds, ram's horns. Those, I don't consider these guys to be vectors and I really don't care what tank they end up in. You can see some water fleas floating around in there too. All of this is microfauna, aquatic microfauna that is really beneficial to your overall aquarium environment. 
So that useless tub of nasty water that you have sitting around somewhere in the corner, actually probably is a host to its own ecosystem, much of which would be beneficial to your system. So one last thing that I wanna do before we go in the house and feed is I wanna remove the duckweed if I can. And to do that, I use a brine shrimp net just because it's easier. And if you guys don't use brine shrimp nets, man, these things are the best thing ever. And a uh, shout out to uh, one of my subscribers and a good friend, uh, uh, Jeff Watts. Um, he actually gave me some extra ones he had. He asked me a funny story. He was like, hey man, you gotta use for some brine shrimp nets. And I was like, hell yeah, I do. You got any? And he was like, yeah, man, try and get it. Don't nobody want to use it? I was like, that's because they're stupid. <laughs> I digress. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for the brine shrimp net. No, it's a good tool to have. And like y'all, y'all know if y'all been following me, I lost a lot of stuff in that movement. But we building back. So thank you for the net. It's a good little tool. So let's get this duckweed out and then we'll go feed. Let's do it. Alright. That shit was kind of cringe, but it's stand on the video. I'm gonna try to do this so y'all can see too. That's the point of a video. So what I do is I hit it first. Cause like some of these ones up here at the top, they actually like the different marble phases, different uh, development phases. And I'll just like touch the net and the, uh, the duck bead will stick to it. And then I just flick it out like that. And I'll put it right back in there because duck weed's okay. And so is algae. Lots of stuff, it goes, you know. It's there for a reason. Whether you want it or not, it's there for a reason. You figure out the reason, you can mitigate it being there. I know why it's here, and I don't really care. I want it here. So that's that. Oh, there's a straight piece of philanthus there. It looks like it's seen better days, but I'm going to watch. I can get the philanthus in there. The skeeters are still stuck to the net. Y'all thought I was going to F up, huh? Nope. Put right, the ass is right back in there. Y'all gonna die today. All right, so there goes that. Put my net out here so I can drive. I hang up everything, because if I don't, the dogs will get it. But I want it to be close to where I'm using it. So there's your skeeters. There's your larva right there. Now, let's go feed, and I'll show you how to do that. Sometimes, if I have too much water, I will pour this through a brine shrimp net. Here, let me show you. I'll show you. Just like this. Just pour it through. Pour it through. Kind of let you know how many you have. All right? And then slip it over. Slip it over and dump it in. Now. This is where this comes in. See those ones stuck in the net? ain't stuck no more. And I just keep doing it. Try not to suck none up, obviously. I just keep doing it until I get them all in there. Got them all. Yep. All right. So I'll put this up. There's your look one more time. Look at that baby ram song. Ain't even cute. That's a cool little, little critter, bro. I like it. I don't know why, but I do. All right. See y'all in a minute. Okay, now that we harvested the food, let's feed them. And I can't think of a better tank than the Agapo Pico. So let's feed the Neon Tetras and then it'll give y'all a chance to see them too and see how the bowl came out. So let me get set up, set the camera up and then we'll plop some in. So here is the Agapo simulation. As you can see, uh, I thinned out some of the Philanthus fluid tins cause it was just doing nuts. Uh, the Luigia still in there somewhere. And if y'all look up to the top, the leaves on the pear tree are gone. I explained it 
on my live stream that y'all would check out here. But uh, in layman's terms, real quick, humidity. That thing is still alive. And I could probably get it to, to continue to grow. It's just that the uh, humidity got a hold of it and it withered away. I went one week without missing a damn thing and it could plunk. So if y'all do this and your tree grows, just make sure you keep the humidity the way it needs to. Like I did this project in the uh, winter, late winter, early spring. So it was cold and the heater on. It's Texas. We, it gets 60 degrees here. We turn the heater on. So that's that. Let's feed them. That's what y'all want to see. There you are. Look at that. Down the hatch. Watch it. All right, let's go check out the Iwagumi Lagoon. I'm gonna wrap this thing up. So let's get these guys fed. Y'all watch these white clouds and these dwarf emeralds. fish some and I gotta be careful because if y'all look we in the end and that freaking dragonfly larva there he is he's sickly food okay that's what we got right there I don't know if these guys are being fed live or not so let's see how they react Can't wait till this 48 hours goes by so I can put these mugs in a tank. Just doing what's right, man. These were trusted to me by somebody. 
and I'm real happy, man. So there they go. Okay, y'all, for an added bonus, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this as is. Everything that's in here, don't even care. And I'm going to just dump it in. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I know it ain't going to hurt us. I hope it don't. All right, here we go. Give it a little swirl. And... Boom. Wow, they're ravenous, bro. Anything that ain't nailed down, they're going to eat it. They just eating everything. Look at this dude right here. He don't know if he a vegetarian, a carnivore. He don't know what he want to do with his life. Look at him. Water dogs, man. Holy crap. This has been a pretty fun journey running these Akaras, man. Like I said, I would never in a million years buy one of these fish because I wanted it, but they were offered to me. I'm not gonna turn down the chance to keep anything that swim. I don't care what it is. And here we are. Look at them, they having a having a time on the little ram's horns now. That's cool. You can't eat the help. You cannot eat the help. We gotta name these dudes, man. Y'all started like let's just get some names for these cats, man. They all got their own personality. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at this dude. Look at this one with the big eyes. Him. Look at him. So yeah, let's let's name these guys and gals. They're getting about that age to where we can start trying to determine their uh, gender or their sex, I should say, if they male or female. It seems to be a hot topic these days. All right, what's that for them? All right, since we out here feeding, I'm gonna go ahead and feed the Turks and I'll feed this other tank and I'll give these guys too. Let me show you what I feed my stuff that's outside in maintenance mode. Y'all sit tight. Well, it ain't nothing. Uh, spectacular. I'm just trying to not get this dirty ass garage and shit. This is what I feed, bro. This was free. That I got this in like 2018, I think, when I got one of these tanks from a homie. And I've had it since. And when we moved here, I didn't go to the store, pet store, blah, blah, blah. It was one of those in a pinch situations and I'm digging in a box. It's like one of the only boxes one of my sons packed by themselves and it said fish written on it. Yeah, it had the word fish written on it all nice in a big block letter, blah, blah, blah. And that's the only box that got packed well enough that had all my stuff in it. And it had a bunch of fish food in it, stuff that I've accumulated, stuff like that. Stuff that I don't just normally go pay for, man. I don't just go buy this. You don't need to. But it works, and I have it. So there you go. Like feeding it, feeding this until it's gone ain't gonna hurt nothing. I won't buy any more. But yeah, that's what I feed. So let's get these guys finished feeding, and then um, y'all wanna nerd out? Let's nerd out. We'll nerd out a little bit. Then we'll go from now, man. Y'all chill. It's gonna be good. Let's feed these fish. Now, I'm just talking smack, but everybody got their own feeding style, right? You got your, you got your pinchers. You know, they wanna be cute and, and get a little pinch of food like this. Pinch it in there, just pinch it in, you know. Then you got your overfeeders who they just want to feed the fish, so they'll grab more than a pinch and they'll just drop it in like that. Then you got your wannabe pros, you know, think they know what they're doing, 
got a couple of fish tanks in a room somewhere and they call it a fish room. And they're the pros. They're gonna start breeding fish and selling fish and pretty soon they're gonna be, they're gonna be up there with, with fucking Petco and Seagrass, you know? And they wanna take a big chunk of food like this and to show you how comfortable they are at feeding fish. And I, I'm a knowledge hobbyist. They, they get their hands wet, you know? They put it in the water and do this. You know, and you, you know, you gotta do the flicks, you know. Like that. You don't know what you're doing if you don't. Flick it in. And that's, that's how they feed. Me, I don't do none of that shit. I just, if I just put that shit in there, basically. So those are fed. Man, a lot of food. That it's literally awardly goldfish flakes. But I will tell you something. This is 29% protein. So there you go. But a lot of people don't understand these goldfish are omnivores too. So this is perfectly fine for these cichlids. It's perfectly fine. This is a nice staple. I'm not saying go buy goldfish food feed to your cichlids. I'm saying in a pinch. You could feed it to them if you needed to, in a pinch. So here's these guys in the dirty tank. And there ain't nothing in here but these three Akaras. And there is also a Longfin Zebradania right there. Rescues, um, rescues these guys are, but they're cool. Yeah. The only reason they are in here is because I told y'all I'm doing something. And um, look at this guy, man. Let's get him right. Look at him. Beautiful. A little something belly on him, but I ain't had him that long. So we get him right. They get to that awkward stage when they start growing. It's just like puppies and teenagers, man. This is what I call the lanky. The lanky phase but let me show you i do lazy man feeding man i got the feed here i'm just gonna put it in the filter right there let that shit blow let it blow down like that now that's usually what i do because i'm lazy and i don't feel like moving the top or moving this wire to my shop fan which is why i'm in here sweating because i don't have it on and it ain't hot enough to turn on the air conditioners yet either. I'm gonna show y'all that in a minute. Let me feed these Turks. A little, little feed. Just a little feed. And now my hands is wet. In lieu of being a hypocrite, I gotta get this food off my hand. Yeah, hope I don't. Let me see if they'll bite me. I wonder if they'll bite me. Y'all think they'll bite me? I don't think they'll bite me. Hmm. I've had fish that bite. Like Papa Smurf, my lung fish. Rest in peace, Papa Smurf. That motherfucker, he would bite. Look at these Turks. Beautiful. I got these things upside down so they can go inside the holes. There is also three self-cloning crayfish in here as well. And a dead convict that I threw in here for the crawfish to eat. See? He got a fur coat. Let me see here. There's three of them in here. Let's see where they at. Come on, crawfish. Where you at? Baby, I in this log. There go one right there. See? That is a crawdad. If y'all can see that. Leave him alone. Let me get my hand out of this nasty ass one. Okay, there's that. Oh, shout out. Still rocking the uh, freaking uh, Supreme Ovations, boys and girls. Told you, these things last and they work good. Um, I don't have any in the, any aquariums in the house, but they do work very well, as you can see. Need to do a top off donor. Probably ain't gonna happen though till next week. Cause I'm lazy. Turk video, leave it in the comments. I have a outline 
to do a species spotlight on a Turkana because there's not a whole lot on YouTube for them. But I figure I can do one. Like it's a it's a it's a hemichromis. So let me know if y'all want to see a species spotlight, a little highlight type of joint on the hemichromis exul, also known as the Turkana cichlids, located in what is formerly known as Lake Rudolph. So if you go to Google it, hold on. If you go to Google it and you can't find enough information on the actual Lake Turkana, it's because they changed the name. It's Lake Rudolph. It has been Lake Rudolph since it was a lake and they changed it recently to Lake Turkana. Ethiopia to the north, Kenya to the south is the countries that share this lake. And the cool thing about these fish is they built a dam, I think on the Ethiopia side. And it's just, you know, y'all know what dams do to aquatic ecosystems. So do the math, really interesting story if you wanna look into it. And um, actually it's a big spot for tourism too. That is a Rift Valley cichlid. Even though it's a hemichromis, it is located in a Rift Lake. In the Rift Valley, it's a Rift Valley cichlid. So there's that. Um, well, let's go ahead and get over here. All right. So I want to give a special shout out to the homie George over at Mexicali. Thank you, bro. He reached out to me on Instagram. We chopped it up, went back and forth. I found out that he had those fish. I got them now. Thank you, bro. Y'all go check out the homie George over at Mexicali Aquatics. He's smoking like he ain't even been on YouTube that long. He's been in a hobby. He's just like me. Been in the hobby for a minute. Figured YouTube. He likes to share his tanks with his grandbabies. Good dude. Go check him out. Mexicali over at Mexicali Aquatics. Just type in Mexicali. It'll pop up. But like, hey, y'all check these comics out. Wait, 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 wait. All right, y'all. We're going to probably wrap this one up. Hey, y'all look at my plants. I just had to look at it. That's what plants supposed to look like. You know what I'm talking about? But anyway, we're going to wrap this one up, man. Once again, y'all go check out Mexicali. Thank you, bro, for those fish, bro. We're going to be looking forward to those. I'm going to let them acclimate, and y'all be looking forward to those. Just be looking forward to them. Anyway, thank you for stopping by. If you're new, welcome. And if you are a repeat viewer thank you for rocking with me hey i'm gonna give a shout out to the homie larry d hey y'all go check him out man formerly known as larry d now he changed his channel to chili heads aquatic larry funny he a cool dude and he got some cool video i'll watch this dude eat hot sauce like his soup and I eat spicy food. But y'all go check him out, man. Hey, thank y'all for rocking with me. Like I said, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you feel like doing so. I'm Steve from Warrior Planet Tanks. Y'all have a blessed day.
I got fish to play with y'all. I'm out.